السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا all praises due to Allah alone we all praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray None can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program, Ask Huda, the first episode after Eid al-Fitr and after the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah accept from all of us. Amen. Allow me to remind you with our phone numbers, beginning with area code 002, then 0238551. Alternatively, a record 002, then 0100-546-9323. And the WhatsApp numbers are a record 001-347-80625. And finally, a record 001-361-489-1503. By the grace of Allah, it was a blessed month. We did our best to cover uh, almost every day in Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. And uh, normally our programs, we go live uh, from 9 to 10 p.m. Mecca time, 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, Cairo time. Uh, but due to the lockdown and the curfew, and sometimes it is really problematic for the crew who come from other govern rates, other cities and states, uh, to make it on time and then it leaves them with a great deal of hardship to return home so we decided to keep our live programs during the same time uh, during Ramadan from 5 to 6 p.m. Mecca time we'll do our best inshallah to accommodate all our viewers to answer their questions to the best of our abilities so today and uh, on Tuesday, inshallah, Sundays and Tuesdays of every week, we'll have Askoda 5 to 6 p.m. Mecca time. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we'll have Gardens of the Pious, inshallah. Also, we'll do our best to resume correct recitation same time on Thursday. May the Almighty Allah accept from all of us, stay home, keep safe. May Allah protect us all. Amen. The first question we have is from Sir Faraz Sheikh. Sir Faraz says, I have a question regarding uh, women who have missed their fasting in Ramadan due to menstruation. Can they join their niyyah of Ramadan, missed fast and shawwal six days at the same time? The answer is no, that is not permissible according to the vast majority of the scholars. Why not? Because this is faridah. Making up the missed fasting of Ramadan is mandatory, while fasting the six days of Shawwal is mere recommended. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Abu Ayyub, may Allah be pleased with him, whoever fasts during Ramadan and follows that by fasting six days during the month of Shawwal, the Almighty Allah will grant him the reward of fasting for the entire year. And we discussed a few times the mechanism as why the one month and six days of fasting will be equivalent to fasting for the entire year. And then if the Muslim maintains doing so on annual basis, then a dahr here, Qasiyam al dahr will simply mean fasting for the entire lifetime because uh, simply you'll be doing this on regular basis. So fasting on the six days of Shawwal is voluntary and it doesn't have to be consecutive. And uh, 
you can simply combine the intention of fasting two voluntary fastings and earn the reward for both of them simultaneously because both of them are voluntary so overlapping is okay here in other words tomorrow is Monday so if somebody decided to fast tomorrow because normally they fast on Mondays and Thursdays with the intention of fasting on Monday since it is a Sunnah from the Prophet Sallallahu meanwhile fasting one of the days of the six days of Shawwal that's permissible combining the two intentions permissible and you will achieve the reward of both of them but combining the intention of Fard Faridah obligatory act of worship and a recommended act of worship is not permissible Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Afdal from the Maldives. Assalamu alaikum. Afdal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to ask with Akhi Afdal. Yeah, my question is about inheritance and it's a bit complicated. So I hope you can understand me the first time I explain it to you. I'll do my best. Go ahead. So, so my question is about inheritance and hello. Yes, I hear you, Abdul. Just go ahead and say your yeah. question all at once. So my question is that my mother, uh, my mother has a mother, so that would be my mother's mother. So she had uh, two different husbands, and she had two kids. That was uh, my mother's brother, so that would be her half brother. And then what happened was my grandfather, my great, uh, my mother's grand. Hello. I think the question. No, no, no. Trust me, I hear you. Why don't you just say your question all at once? I'm listening carefully, okay? All right. So my mother's grandfather had a had a huge land, so it's a very big land. And then what happened was, uh, my grandfather had two kids. Both of them were daughters. So he gave one piece of the land to one of her, one of his daughters, and the other one would be my mother's mom. But my mother's mom was never in the city. So uh, what my grandfather did was she, he brought three witnesses and then he gave the uh, house to my mother's mom. But uh, before the house was legally registered, what happened was my mother's mom had actually died. So then the people who would remain would be my mom and her half brother. And then what happened was, my grandfather had finally decided to like, because he was not able to give the house to his uh, daughter, he wanted to give it to his grand grandkids. And what happened was my mom was also never in the city. So my grandfather, because of the traditions and what happens 30 years ago, he wanted to give it as soon as possible before he died. And then he gave it to just my mother's brother, that would be, uh, my mom's half brother and then he gave it and then later my my mother's mom had just completely cut all ties off with my mom like and then like the family fell apart like even when I meet him in the mosque he would never even say hi to me but back then I was really a small and I had no idea that this had actually happened so my question is is there like any hug in the hereafter for what has happened because exactly. legally what has happened is it's impossible to legally prove it because once something get registered back in the old days the courts will never take it Jazakallah and my mother does not thank yeah. you thank you okay. yeah. Jazakallah khair. and basically this is not an inheritance question this is a question about somebody who confiscated somebody else's right so in the future inshallah if you have a, a lengthy question if you send it in writing and particularly questions pertaining to inheritance so we can divide it uh, fairly we'll be more than happy to do that but yes inshallah yes your family do have rights with your uncle and that will be collected on the day of judgment assalamu alaikum ayub from canada assalamu alaikum ayub wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sheikh how are you alhamdulillah i'm doing great thank you for asking Akh ayub i hope you enjoyed your eid Alhamdulillah, I did. Uh, I hope you did as well, Dr. Salah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, I have one question for you. Uh, yeah. Sheikh, here in, in the States, 
there is a lot of protests, and even in Canada, it's starting now. Uh, we have protests going on, and people are looting and stealing and uh, burning cars, burning property. I want your opinion. Well, not your opinion. What's the Islamic ruling on uh, protesting and demonstrations like this? Okay. That's that's all. Hayakul ajzablo kar islamikum. Jazana iyakum. Thank you, Ayub from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Uh, my question is regarding Shawwal fasting. Yeah. Six, uh, sunnah fasting. Um, the, the lady who they missed the fast during Ramadan, should they fast uh, the first fast first or then uh, Got your carry question, on with Muhammad. Uh, Do you have another one? Yes. Uh, that's it, Sheikh. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. So, um, in Surah Al-Fajr, Allah the Almighty says, وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلَ الْلَمَّةِ وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّةِ SubhanAllah, it's a human nature that human beings love to, pos to possess money, and love to take money even if it is not theirs, to the extent that they devour the wealth of others, and they confiscate the inheritance, they, they deprive... Um, the very close relatives from their own inheritance. The siblings take the rights of others. Uh, you know, the children take the rights of others. The parents likewise, except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rightly guided, whom we make dua, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among them. If you cannot collect your rights in this dunya, it will not be wasted. It will be definitely collected on the hereafter, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا ألفين أحدكم يأتي يوم القيامة يحمل شاة على كتفه لها رغا أو بعيرا أو أو uh, It's a long hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I don't want to see any of you on the day of judgment carrying a sheep on his shoulders or a goat or a camel or whatever. Because whatever ye steal in this dunya, whatever rights and amana of others you take away from them, you conceal and you do not give it to them willingly in this dunya, you will come on the day of judgment carrying it on your shoulder. Subhanallah, the Almighty Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَغْلُ الْيَأْتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever steals, especially from the public fund, uh, shall come on the day of judgment bearing whatever he stole in the dunya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the other hadith, مَنْ اغْتَصَبَ شِبْرًا مِنْ أَرْضٍ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ طُوَّقَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ سَبْعِ أَرْضِينَ That's a very powerful warning and a serious threat. If a person happened to take, a shibr is a hand span, uh, 10 inches, Okay, maybe 10 inches, 20 centimeters approximately. If a person happened to take that much, that much from a land without right on the day of judgment, it would be this hand span like a collar around his neck all the way through the seven earth. That's very strong, very powerful. And that's why, brothers and sisters, one has to be very careful. Do not ever think of taking something which is not yours. Second thing, we are supposed to record everything in writing. Hiba, Atiya, Dain, the debt. The longest ayah in the Quran is ayah to Dain, the debt ayah of Surah Al Baqarah. And Allah the Almighty commanded. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا تداينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فكتبوا. So we're supposed to record that in writing. Those who do not know reading and writing, they cannot sign fingerprint, stamp, to make sure to secure the rights because النفس ضعيفة, the human nature is weak. And sometimes wealth is very tempting. So the person says, we'll find many excuses. Satan will make it seem fair to the person to take the property of his sister or of his siblings or his nephews and nieces. 
we are supposed to give the amanat to those whom they belong to. Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. This is what Allah commands in Surah An-Nisa. Secondly, Ayyub, we're all aware of and following what is happening in the States, and as you said, is extended to Canada. It erupted due to a white cop killing with no mercy by pinning the neck and stepping by with his knee over the neck of somebody whom he handcuffed and he submitted and he wasn't doing anything, he wasn't resisting. And the rest of the cops, the rest of the white cops, four of them were watching. One was pinning and stepping with his knee over his neck and the rest were watching and preventing the public from intervening. All of that was caught on video and it was published until he took his last breath. No mercy. So the cop, uh, they found out that he has a long history of violating human rights, especially the blacks, the colored people, Latinos and the blacks. And he was involved in similar cases before and all cases were simply closed. So the law in the States and in Canada and North America allows the citizens to protest and to demonstrate any violations peacefully. Is that permissible? Yes, that is permissible because they have a long history of violating the rights of colored people, whether Native Americans, Native Indians, Native or Afro-Americans. Um, so the people do not have any other solution but to protest and to object to that through demonstrations. Mark my word, peaceful and organized demonstrations. We're totally against the looting, the setting fire on the buildings and breaking the properties and the vehicles, whether of the cops or the government or, or, or uh, individuals. That is not permissible. But if your question is concerning, is it permissible to protest and to demonstrate? Yes, that is permissible. Your country allows that. And it is the, uh, I believe, the First Amendment. It gives the citizens the right to express freely their views. Keeping in mind that all officers were simply free to go home. Yeah, they just fired them. Maybe they will recruit them again. So they fired them, but they were free. So killing a human being isn't easy. Not because he is color. A lot of people say, are you pro black lives matter? I'm pro every life matters. Blacks, Latinos, women, children, Afro-Americans, white, it doesn't matter. Every life matter. In Islam, the Almighty Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا So in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah explained that taking the soul of a single human being is, taking, is similar to taking the soul of all human beings, all mankind. And taking the soul uh, and, and saving the soul of a single human being is similar a reward to saving the entire humanity at large. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Samira from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, brother. How are you? And congratulations on your new baby born. Child. Thank you so much, Sister Samira. May Allah bless you and your family. Alhamdulillah. Brother, I have seen all your videos like during Ramadan at your rooftop and um, sharing us with the precious night and showing us the video of the next day, the next morning, the sunrise. I really enjoyed it so much, but the only thing is I, I am, I might sound funny, but I, I became very curious to know about your thought, which might be the Qatar night. I know Allah knows the best, but still it's, you know, my curiosity, seeing all your <laughs> live videos and everything, I really want to know about your thoughts, brother. But Sister Samira, you know, on the Eid night, we had a beautiful uh, Huda Eid party uh, where we invited Dr. Zakir Nayak, Dr. Bilal Phillips, and Yusuf Estes, everyone from their locality, and four of us were live. And actually, I showed a video of sunrise on the morning of the 29th, and uh, we confirmed that it was 
that blessed night following the sunrise. Even though we discussed that, you know, during Ramadan, we shouldn't say which night is it so that people wouldn't get bored or, you know, quit. Uh, but alhamdulillah, shukla, it's just of sharing the glad tidings. So, mashallah, uh, we did uh, announce that uh, on the Eid night. And okay, most likely, I, maybe I missed that. Uh, uh, most likely, it was the night of the 29th of Ramadan. May Allah accept from all of us. Oh. As, as I like to say, Inshallah. that alhamdulillah, if uh, you did work hard every night, especially the last 10 nights of Ramadan, then I can assure you, Sister Samira, mashallah, you've Definitely witnessed Layla Talqat. Brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break and inshallah we'll be back in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers should appear on the bottom of the screen quickly area code 002 then 0238551331 alternatively area code 002 then 01005469323 WhatsApp numbers area code 0013478026125 and finally area code 0013614891503 and alhamdulillah, we're both live on uh, the Facebook page and Salah and the YouTube uh, channel. Sister Hiba from Qatar, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah shaykh. Welcome to Ask Wada. Go ahead. I have two questions, shaykh. Um, my first question is regarding a hadith recorded in Al Bukhari and Muslim. The translation of the hadith is recite the Quran as long as your hearts are inclined to it. When they differ from it, then get up and remove yourself from reciting it. Can you please explain this hadith? Does it mean that if we are not able to concentrate when reading the Quran, we should not continue? Okay. Uh, that's my first question. My second question is, what is the difference between seeing Allah on the Day of Judgment as mentioned in the hadith of Abu Huraira and seeing Him in Jannah as a reward? Will the disbelievers be able to see Allah on the Day of Judgment? Okay. That's all, Shaykh. Barakallah fikum. Thank you, Sister Hiba from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. Mudathir from Finland. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakat. Sheikh, I I have a question. Um, if one is saving some income, and uh, what should be prioritized uh, to do to perform the Hajj or to build a house? Uh, okay. Yeah, jazakum Allah khairan. Jazana wa iyaakum. Thank you, Mudassar. Sister Khadija from the UK, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Khadija, Assalamu alaikum. Let's take another call for now. Okay. Uh, please try again, Sister Khadija. First of all, Muhammad from United Arab Emirates who asked about, uh, you know, taking advantage of the remaining time of Shawwal Shall, shall a woman who have missed a few days during Ramadan due to her menses begin by making up the missed days first or is she permitted to fast the six days of Shawwal uh, to take advantage of the Hadith and the virtues of the Hadith then she can make up the missed days of Ramadan later on as long as she makes it before the following Ramadan. The answer according to the vast majority of the scholars, yes, that is perfectly permissible. I know that a lot of people are going to jump in and say, but I read in this website and I Sheikh said so and so. I perfectly understand that. And uh, we're presenting comparative fiqh. We are not presenting one single school of thought. If I'm only following Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal and the Hanbali school of thought, I would tell you right away, no, it is not permissible. And a woman must make up the missed days first. Not only a woman, a woman or a man who have missed some days in 
Ramadan for a valid reason. They cannot fast any voluntary fasting before making up the missed fasting. And this is one of the views of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. But guess what? The vast majority of the scholars are of the view that it is permissible. Some permissible, generally speaking, such as Imam Abu Hanifa says, it doesn't make any difference. So if you fast the six days in Shawwal because you want to take advantage of the virtues of the Hadith, then you make up eventually uh, the missed days of Ramadan during any other time. As long as it is before the following Ramadan, it's perfectly permissible. Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i said, it is permissible while it is makruh. It would have been much better to finish the missed days first than to make up uh, the, uh, the missed days, then to fast the six days of Shawwal. But if you do begin with this or that, it's permissible. So from that we understand the vast majority of the scholars are of the view that you may start by making fasting the six days of Shawwal uh, first before making up the missed days of Ramadan. I like to uh, follow up with this uh, answer but after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Ummu Aisha from Australia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, Sheikh, my question is that um, my sister got on a plan, a payment plan, and I wanted a phone, but it was too expensive for me. So I got into a deal with her, and I, I got into a deal with her, and I paid her $750 in return for her to say she lost her phone and she gets a new one from the insurance company that she was with. But I'm very regretful and I'm not sure how to go about that. So what should I do? Okay. Um, just call the insurance company and say, we found the phone. Uh, I, I really appreciate that you have the feeling uh, which corrects you and uh, the remorse which puts you back on the straight path. As Allah the Almighty said, in Allah يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّوا الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَلِهَا So you know what you did was wrong. And it's like somebody has used his insur medical insurance card uh, of somebody else towards himself or of himself towards one of his relatives. That's not permissible. I made a deal with a company that I'm a beneficiary. Okay? Then I'm not supposed to hand it over to somebody else to benefit out of it. Likewise, as a matter of fact, purchasing an insurance on the phone, it's called commercial insurance, it is not permissible. We're on paying like $5 a month or so in case that the phone is damaged or the, the phone got stolen, they give me a new phone. This is gambling and usury and it is not permissible. But sometimes it is mandatory if you take a phone with a plan of two years so you're not paying anything for it, you're just paying for the plan to commit yourself to stay with the phone company for two uh, years. So eventually you're paying for the phone, but uh, in another way. So applying for an insurance, commercial insurance, even on the phone is not permissible. In this case, I would advise you to call them back and refund the money. Thank you, Sister Umu Aisha. May Allah bless you and your family. Haidar from Finland, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Sheikh, I hope you had a very good Eid. It was lovely to see Dr. Zakir Naik and all the other guests you had invited on uh, Eid Day. Alhamdulillah, it was, very special it, it was a beautiful here. time to spend with the family. We're all stuck at home, but it was a nice stuck though. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, uh, in, in, in the same spirit, uh, because you know I'm from Finland, so I wanted to ask you that we have a very big challenge in summers over here. Our Maghrib is around 11.30 in the night and uh, the Fajr prayer is at 2.30 in the morning. So we have very little time to sleep. Uh, I, uh, I want to ask you, how do you suggest or what do you suggest that how do we uh, tend to this problem given we have to go early in the morning to the offices again and uh, how do we take it? How okay. do we take care of this dilemma of uh, performing all the uh, namaz on the same on the right time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're asking about the prayers. What time is Fajr, you said? 
Uh, Fajr is at 2.30 in the morning uh, and Maghrib is at 11.30 the night before. Excellent. And uh, what time is sunrise? Sunrise is at 4 o'clock in the morning. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Haider yeah. from Finland. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Kulthum from the UK. Assalamu alaikum. Um Kulthum, welcome to Ask Uda. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Sheikh, I want to ask about Shawal fast. I read on your post on Facebook saying that you don't have to complete your obligatory fast before you do the Shawal fast. But I read on Facebook um, on uh, somebody asked Asim al Hakim about this fast, and he said obligatory fast before the Shawal fast. So I'm a bit confused about this. Can you explain, please? I don't know what to do. How long you been watching the program today? Since when did you start watching? Uh, Today's program or before? Right now. I mean, when did you log uh, in? Just now, just now. Okay, because I just finished answering this question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I want to share with my lovely viewers a very important etiquette of uh, asking, not asking from me, asking in general. You never go to a doctor and then one, while he's prescribing a medication, he say, but I went to another doctor and he said, this medicine is good, is not good for you. And this is better. So why did you go to this doctor in the first place? Sheikh Asim al-Hakim is a lovely person. He's a great da'i and scholar. May Allah bless him. He's my lovely brother. Okay. We hang around. We eat together. We enjoy coffee together. We play tennis table uh, together. And uh, he beats me a lot, and I beat him sometimes. Okay, I mean, we're more than friends. But it doesn't mean that we are cloning of each other. It doesn't mean that whatever he says, I must say. It doesn't mean that every single thing that Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, his eminence, may Allah have mercy on him, said that I must adopt, and I'm following a particular school of thought, which I never change their view. Well, my view is never different than view. Well, this is not my style at least. For me, since my childhood, we studied and we have learned to study the different madhahib, to widen your view, to give you the ability of searching in order to find out the most adequate answer. So I just finished answering that. As a matter of fact, the opinion of the vast majority of the scholars that it is permissible to begin by making, uh, by fasting the six days in Shawwal, whether consecutive or scattered throughout the month, and then later on, you can start making up the mass days of Ramadan due to the time strain. That's number one. Secondly, subhanAllah, I have seen messages saying that, oh, subhanAllah, that's a relief. I use not to fast the six days of Shawwal at all because normally, Making up the missed days of Ramadan will take me the whole month of Shawwal. If I fast, some sisters, their period lasts for eight days, ten days, or even more, Wallahi. So if you're asking them to fast every other day or to fast for 17 days in, uh, or 18 days in Shawwal, and they just finish Ramadan, and it is Eid and so on, it is very problematic for them. So are we delivering ease because we're cool guys, because we like to give ease and that's it? No, because in the Sharia there is ease. And when we study the effective cause that is mentioned in the Hadith, why do we get the reward of fasting for the whole year? Because if you fast uh, the 30 days of Ramadan and six days, uh, 36 days times 10, that's almost a year, mashallah. So I can make them after Yes, you can, okay? In addition to, our mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, has mentioned in the hadith that sometimes she would be late in making up the mess days of Ramadan that she missed due to the menses, and she would make them up in Sha'ban the following year. Oh my God, this is like 11 months. Correct. Because Musa. You can make it in Shawwal, you can make it up in Dil Qa'da, Dil Hijjah, Muharram, Safar, anytime. Provided you make them up before the following Ramadan. 
And also, it is indeed a lot better. It is best to make them up as soon as you can. But it is not a must. Okay? So if I didn't fast the six days of uh, Shawwal, can I still make up the missed days of Ramadan in the remaining 11 months? General consensus, yes, that is permissible. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa Yusuf from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, ya shaykh. Akhi Yusuf, uh, welcome to evening. Ask Oda. Go ahead. Wa alaikum assalam. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Jazakallah, ya shaykh. May Allah blessings be with you. Amen. Oh, with all your program. Amen. Pray for Allah subhanahu throughout. Amen. Um, I'm actually a medical doctor okay. here in Nigeria. So we've been seeing, let's say, the this pandemic since it started. We've seen a lot of cases. And at some point, uh, hello? Yes, I hear you. Okay. At some point, mosques were closed and the prayers were restricted to prevent the spread to ensure social distancing and a lot of other things so but i have my my i have two questions number one is at the point most reopened especially in the haramain now in masjid and nabawi of what we've been seeing is like a separation of the soul like people pray like one to two meters apart just to observe the social distancing and to prevent the spread while observing other precautions. But the way we were taught in Islam is that the soul has to be very close and um, we should observe it like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has prepared us to do it. So I don't know what is the new Islamic uh, injunction or ruling. Yusuf, or have, you, separation. have you prayed the last Jum'ah, Dr. Yusuf? Sir? Have you prayed, have you attended the last Friday prayer in the masjid? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Yes. Okay. Well, and the one before? Yes, because... And the one before? No, I didn't. And for a month no, you haven't, haven't... And for a whole month you haven't yes. been praying Jumu'ah. Okay. And yes. what about Eid? Did yes. you pray Eid in the masjid or... I prayed Eid at home. I prayed Eid at home. Okay. Now... Um, I would request you to hang up and you listen to the answer. That would be better for uh, you, inshallah, to listen uh, without an echo. Okay? Thank you, Dr. Yusuf. And before I take any further calls, more than a month ago, when some pictures uh, were showed on the social media of some masajid in Pakistan praying while keeping the physical distancing, uh, one and a half meter or so, or two yards between each two musalli, a lot of people raised question marks and uh, they started picking on them. These people are the people of innovations and bid'ah. So I presented a short video about five to six minutes and I said, this is perfectly in the spirit of the Sharia, ah. perfectly valid. It is permissible and the prayer is valid. And again, some people said, but Sheikh so and so said it's haram and the prayer is invalid. We are dealing with the ahkam of do's and do not do's, halal and haram, based on the principles of jurisprudence, not based on, you know, personal understanding or what you think of. Question number one, lining, straighten up the rows, filling in the gaps in the prayer. Is it a condition for the validity of the congregational prayer or is it mere recommended? It's recommended. No one would say it's a condition for the validity of the prayer. Accordingly, no one dares to say those people's prayer is invalid. But the Prophet ﷺ would go between the rows to make sure that they fill in the gaps. And as we keep telling people in the salah, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, uh, the, the, the line will be straightened. We all know all of that. But are we keeping physical distancing? because we're boycotting each other. We're not interested in lining up next to each other. Of course not. It is due to we're having a crisis that is 
preventing people even from praying in the masajid. It led to the closure of the masajid for a couple months, some countries, three and four months. I asked you, Dr. Yusuf, and you're a medical doctor, have you prayed Jumu'ah? No. Last? No. The one before? No. And guess what? Praying Jumu'ah is a mandatory and an individual duty on every single male adult Muslim. Allah the Almighty revealed in a surah which he called Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu idha nudiya lil-salati min yawm al-jumu'ati fas'aw ila dhikri allahi wa daru al-bayat. So it is compulsory to the extent that any business, any business transaction, any trade that is done during the Salat al-Jumu'ah or the Friday prayer or the khutbah itself is invalid and it is haram. But we're doing so because the masajid are closed. So I presented a video and I said, if you have the quota, you can make Jumu'ah at home. Again, people said, no, how can you say that? We're not saying that. I'm not taking it out of my pocket. I'm not making ishtihad. I'm just reiterating the opinions of the scholars of the past. But if you fetch and you read, you will find out. Okay? So you yourself and the whole country was not praying. Uh, they were not praying Jumu'ah, right? even though it is mandatory. Now they open up with the rules and regulations of the doctors like yourself. Keep the physical distancing. Yes, sir, we will keep it. Would the prayer be valid? Yes, it is valid. So is it permissible to do so? Take it from me. Not only permissible, it's also recommended. Then just a couple days after I issued this fatwa, and it was on my page two days later or three, the Haram started implementing what they called it social distancing, I call it physical distancing, and the Haram. So you saw the Imam of the Haram in the Taraweeh and the five daily prayers praying, and even the rest of the Imams keeping physical distancing. So is their prayer valid or invalid? Valid. Is it halal or haram? Haram, and it is perfectly in the spirit of the Sharia. How good is it to stick to each other than somebody you know, as a doctor, you know that you can, be, you can be testing positive with showing no symptoms. So basically, you're a carrier of the virus. You can infect others while not knowing. So we're keeping this physical distancing in order to prevent that. And prevention is better than cure. Thank you for your question, uh, Brother Yusuf. And the answer, it is definitely permissible to do so. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum I have, a, I have a question. Yes. Sister Fatima, go ahead. Question, yeah. I'm making up the mist. And I want to know, yeah. Can you hear me? Making up the mist days for Ramadan, is it permissible to fast on Friday and Shaban as well? Okay. It is permissible as long as you mm -hmm. don't single out Friday by itself. So if you fast Thursday along with Friday, perfect. Friday along with Saturday, Sorry? that is perfect. Did you hear me? Well, you can hang up and hear the answer. No, again. I don't. Okay, just hang up and hear oh, the okay. answer, inshallah. Singling out Friday with fasting is not permissible. So if you fast a day before or a day after, like you fast Thursday along with Friday, it is permissible. Friday along with Saturday, that is permissible. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, we have Sister Hiba from Qatar. The hadith is a sound hadith. It is a beautiful prophetic guidance that whenever you feel inclined to the Quran, attentive, not absent minded, not distracted, go ahead and read Quran as much as you can. Similar to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he entered the masjid once and he saw a rope was stretched between two of the, pole of, the, of the poles of the masjid. He inquired about it. He said, what is this? They said, this rope belongs to Zainab, Zainab bin Tijash, his wife. May Allah be pleased with her. What for? They said, Ya Rasulullah, she prays at night for so long and whenever she feels weak and weary, she hangs on the rope, not to sit down and to continue praying even though she's fatigued and she's tired, she's sleepy. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded 
untying the rope. He said, Hullu, remove it, untie it. Then he remarked, saying, Liusalli ahadukum nashatahu, fa idha thatara, fal yarqud. Let one of you pray as long and as much as you're awake and you feel like praying. You know what you're saying. فَإِذَا فَطَرَفَ الْيَرْقُدِ If you're too sleepy, then lie down, rest. For the same reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارَ حَتَّى تَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقُولُونَ In Surah An-Nisa, he said, Oh, you believe. You shouldn't pray while being intoxicated. Why? Lest, instead of invoking Allah to bless yourself, do you curse yourself? Because you're absent-minded. So if you're asleep, if you're so distracted, if you cannot read the Quran, you're barely able to open your eyes, do not read the Quran. Postpone it to some other time. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب. آية number 29, سورة صاد, chapter صاد. That is the purpose of the revelation of the Quran and that is the purpose of its recitation, to ponder over its meaning and to take heed out of that. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Isa from Ghana. Yes. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. From China. From China, Isa. Which state yes. in China, Ya Akhi? Yes. Foshun, Foshun. Foshun. Go ahead, Ya Isa. Tell me, how's the situation in China? Alhamdulillah, we don't have many cases now in China. Amazing. SubhanAllah, you sent all the cases abroad, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we all of yes, exactly. We we are all students, but we are we are Nigerians. May Allah but bless you and China. may Allah protect you. May Allah protect you. Allah, Allahumma I love Allahumma the Nigerians. I love the Nigerian yeah. community. Mashallah. Go ahead. Mashallah. Uh, actually, I fast uh, last month, mm. so suddenly um, I fell sick. For seven days, I did not fast. Okay. So now we are in the month of Shawwal. So, for example, if I want to fast for six days of Shawwal, I have to repent. I have to pray. For, I have to fast for the past six, uh, seven days of Ramadan before I fast for six days of Shawwal. Or I can, um, okay. I can, I, I can fast for six. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so what is your major? What are you studying in China? I study international economics and trade. Excellent. Inshallah, once we hang yeah. up, we're going to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. If you can just go back, okay. rewind the video. Ten minutes ago, we explained in depth, in details, the permissibility okay. of beginning by fasting the six days of Shawwal. It's recommended. Okay. And then you can make up the missed fasting, inshallah, afterward. You can check out the video okay. after we uh, finish, inshallah. Uh, Muddathir from Finland. I have some money. I want to build a house. Uh, w which one is better, to build a house or to go for Hajj? Akhi, if you don't have a house of yours, build a house or buy a flat. Then you can start saving up Excuse me, for Hajj. Allah the Almighty says so. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا I believe it's ayah number 97, Al-Imran. So Allah made Hajj mandatory on people, those who can afford the means. So only if you can afford the means. If you can afford the means, you have surplus, go for Hajj. But I have money, I want to get married. I want to marry, and I want to prepare my daughter to get married, or my son wants to get married, and the money is barely enough. Go ahead and get married. Uh, buy the flat, buy the car. All of that is necessary. Okay? Then Hajj later when you have surplus. Barakallahu uh, feek. Haider from Finland. Akhi, I know your situation. A lot of people envy you guys for living in the, uh, in, in the Finland, in Denmark, in Sweden, but they don't know what, what, what you go through. So for Maghrib, 11.30, in Ramadan, Iftar was 11.30 p.m. And subhanAllah, Fajr is at 2.30. What you can do is, if you normally sleep at 8, if you normally sleep at 8, go ahead and sleep. Then you wake up 
10 minutes before Isha time. Let's say Isha is at 12.30 a.m. So you set up your alarm. You wake up, you pray Maghrib, and then you pray Isha. So then you prayed Maghrib on time, and you followed up by Isha. Then go back to sleep, and then you wake up 15 minutes, 20 minutes before sunrise. I mean, I can tell you, be a strong Muslim, and we pray Maghrib on time, 11.30. Then stay up until you pray Isha at 11.30. Then stay up until you pray Fajr at 2.30. al tajlibu taysir To the extent that sometimes you can even combine Maghrib and Isha, not on a regular basis. But when you work schedule or school or you have exams, and, and it, it's impossible. It's very tough for you to keep praying these two prayers on time. But for Fajr, when you say that Shuruq, or sunrise is at 4 a.m. Enjoy sleeping until half hour before. So you don't have to wake up at 2.30. You can wake up at 3.30, okay, 3.40, as long as you pray Fajr before sunrise. May Allah make it easy for you. And I want to tell you, everyone who's living somewhere where, we, where they find it difficult to offer their acts of worship, the beautiful ayah of Surah Al-Ankabut, ayah number 69, delivers the glad tiding to all of you. The Almighty Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ This is called jihad. What you're doing, offering the prayer on time, despite the fact Maghrib is very late, Isha is after midnight, and Fajr is very early. So this is observing jihad, struggle for the sake of Allah. What do you get? Allah promises to guide you and to keep you rightly guided and to support you, to be with you with His help, with His guidance, with His support, with His protection, with His reward. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of today's edition of Askuda. As I said, inshallah, uh, Askuda will be on Sundays and uh, Tuesdays of every week, 5 p.m. Mecca time, 2 a.m. Inshallah, tomorrow, Monday, and on Wednesday, two days a week, we'll continue with our lovely program, Gardens of the Pious, where we'll study the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu we'll have way through in explaining the beautiful compilation of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi. So, inshallah, uh, tomorrow we'll see you the same time for Gardens of the Pious. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance and in